That's big. All right, good morning, everyone. I am Beth. Um, my dad has had his own welding business in Elbert Lee since before I was born. And my entire life, I have wanted to be like my dad and have my own business as well. But there was never anything that I was really passionate enough about to make that leap. I knew from my dad's experience that being an entrepreneur can be very hard at times. And if you don't have passion for what you're doing, you're not going to make it. Um, so when I graduated high school, I didn't see a lot of opportunity in Albert Lee. I joined the Army. I spent 10 years traveling the country and the world um, and lived a pretty exciting life with a lot of twists and turns. But the best twist of all came last year when at age 40, I had my son and I found my passion. I wanted to start my own business because I wanted to have control of my own life so I could be more present in his. Um, so that's what, I, that's what I did and that's why I'm here. Uh, this all happened a little over a year ago. It's still just me uh, working my way through it. Pre-revenue, pre-manufacturing, I've invested quite a bit personally, friends and family money. Um, so here we go. If you've ever been out to eat with an infant or a toddler, you know exactly what this is. I experienced this shortly after my son was born when I went to lunch with a couple of girlfriends at Pasquale's and their daughters. And it was lunchtime, so it was busy and it was cramped. And these two little girls were so adorable, but they were a complete distraction the entire meal. They were constantly grabbing for everything, throwing it on the ground. Moms would give them something to play with. They'd throw that on the ground. One of the moms was a germaphobe, so everything had to get wiped down every single time. We couldn't have a conversation. I kind of just wanted to get out of there. Uh, as soon as I went back to my office, I went online and I scoured the internet looking for something I could buy for my son so when he was old enough to go out to eat, I wouldn't be that guy and I could have a more peaceful meal. And I couldn't find anything, so I created it. Mat system. It is a silicone placemat, FDA approved, 100% silicone um, placemat with a suction cups on the bottom. And then it has a tether system that allows you to attach any of baby's toys, a pacifier, um, whatever they like, and then you attach the tether to the mat. So now when baby drops or throws things, they stay right there within arm's reach. It also provides a nice clean surface, germ-free for baby's food, um, and you're keeping the germs off of those toys. So the competition, I mentioned that I scoured the internet looking for something to buy. The top mat, really, really cool product. Uh, it has built-in bowls. It suctions to a table with no suction cups. It's a really cool technology, but that's all it does. It just keeps them from throwing their bowls. Then there's plenty of other place mats that just keep you free from germs, but that's all they do. And then there's this thing, it's called the grapple. And at first glance, it was actually pretty cool. Um, it's an apple shaped thing. You open it up and there's three tethers inside and you can attach baby's toys. And on the bottom, there's a suction cup. So I thought, that's really great, maybe I'll get that. Uh, and then I read the reviews. And because the tethers are stiff and there's only one suction cup, as soon as baby pulls on something, it breaks the suction and the whole thing goes on the ground and it's just more of a mess. So I kind of took the best things out of these and I incorporated them into the Busy Baby mat. But what makes the mat, my mat even cooler is that it goes beyond the tabletop. So you can see some pictures of my son using it on the window when he was practicing standing. Um, I had a little episode in the tub where he fell and kind of swallowed some water, reaching for a toy. Made me really nervous. I stuck the mat in there. It keeps him in one place playing so he's not reaching and falling. Uh, so it can go on any smooth, flat surface. So the market that I'm in, uh, it's, it's not really a toy, but I kind of fall into the toy industry. But more than anything, I fall into the baby products online sales, which that department has been increasing rapidly for the last five years and will continue to increase. Everyone, moms go online to buy things for their babies now. Uh, the key one is establishing your brand and protecting your IP. Um, I know for a fact that the second I start selling this thing, it's gonna get knocked off and I can't afford to defend my patent. So what I need to do is just get first to the market, establish my brand, People in the industry are very loyal to the first product that comes out, so hopefully that will be on my side. Penetration is low. There's a couple major companies that put things out there, but there's a ton of small companies like me who create products for babies. So my target customer are people like me, first time parents over the age of 30. Um, this is actually a really growing trend for decades, but especially in the last 10 years, um, in 2016, the women in their 30s actually surpassed women in their 20s having children. And the reason this is, is more couples are waiting longer to start their families. People are focusing on education, establishing their careers. 
with established careers, typically families have a little bit more disposable income to do things like go out to eat and buy things for baby. So there's a lot more purchasing power in this market as well. And of course, all new parents, I think, care about the health and safety of their baby and, and protecting them from germs when they go out. Um, um, born every year in the US. So if you think about that, four million babies, let's call that eight million parents, 16 million grandparents, give them 24 million aunts and uncles, and then throw in every parent has five friends. We're talking about 84 million people every year who care about this new child and are buying something for that family. That's a pretty big potential market size. So where am I at today? So I established the LLC um, before I even had my first prototype. Um, that was the first thing I did. I kind of felt like if I put it out there and make it real, it'll make me keep going. Um, I filed a patent and trademark, both are pending. Um, I developed five products, and I did do professional product development after I created my own little mock-ups at home. So there's a small mat, a large mat, there's the tethers that go to the mat, there's a separate tether that can be used independent of the mat, and then there's little salt and pepper shaped teething toys. Um, I've market tested all of my prototypes with local babies here in Rochester. Uh, it works even better than I imagined, which is really, really cool feeling. Um, but because of financial reasons, I now. Um, I found that I need to just get some product out there. Investors aren't interested quite yet because I'm pre-manufacturing and I'm uh, pre-sales. Um, but I do have a live website that's taking pre-orders. I have orders now. Uh, manufacturing has begun for those two products. I should receive them in January. So what's the vision for this company? Um, first and foremost, let me get those base products out there and get the product in people's hands so people can see this. Um, and then I'll produce the whole line. So I'll start with the small mat and the tethers and then I'll move into producing everything else. It's ready to go, I just need to get there. Um, then I'm gonna market and sell to my secondary market. So I've gotten a lot of feedback that this would be a great product for kids with sensory issues and practicing touching things and holding things for physical therapy for that. I've also been had people reach out and ask me if I would develop a mat that would work for adults with Parkinson's um, because that's one of the things is dropping utensils at the restaurant. Um, it would be handy for, for that market. So I'll expand that way. Um, but then also reach out that you could walk into the restaurant, get your high chair and have it come with a mat. The mat probably has the restaurant's name branded onto it or logo. And then I already have plans to expand the product line. I've got additional um, accessories to go with this mat. Um, one great thing about silicone is you can color on it with dry erase markers and it just wipes right off. Um, so I'll have markers that are tether attached to tethers and just go to the mat, um, as well as utensils and other things. Um, and then upgraded versions of the mat that incorporate LED lighting for visual stimulation, stuff like that. And then ultimately exit strategy someday to sell to one of these big companies that has a lot more resources and money and can take it further than I could. My team right now is pretty much just me. Uh, again, I was in the Army, I've been doing corporate work, I still work a full-time job right now uh, for Cardinal Health. I've got someone lined up to be my CFO when I get to that point. Um, I'm looking for a unicorn. Um, that is an investor that has the capital and the experience needed to help me get where I need to go. Um, I did hire a social media manager. I launched a Kickstarter campaign that ultimately failed, but I realized the need for social media management because it's not a strong suit of mine. And then I have a trade show team whenever I do have product to take to trade shows um, that can go with me. So here's what's left. These are my to-dos. This is where I need help. Um, this whole product, this whole time, I've been trying to figure this out as I go, um, and I've been learning things slowly but surely. I've made some mistakes. Um, so now I am applying for my loan so I can finish off paying. I have the money to start my production run, but not to finish it. <laughs> so I have to get a loan for that. Um, trying to get set up on Amazon has been a real challenge. Amazon is kind of a beast. Um, I've run into some roadblocks. I needed barcodes. I didn't know the first thing about getting barcodes. Uh, figured that out and then now there's this state tax thing I need to figure out um, so that's next uh, the end of the year is coming up I need to download QuickBooks and start figuring out my accounting I've been tracking expenses in a spreadsheet but that's not going to do me much good at tax time um, and then I need to find a manufacturer for initial packaging um, and create a package insert so what I have I actually brought it um, this is a little sleeve that my aunt made for me and this is what I, I need to make 5,000 of these sleeves <laughs> Um, and I'm not going to ask her to do that. And I'm going to put down the mic so I can just show you guys this. 
So this fits in a purse really, really well. Most diaper bags. It unrolls. You can see the back side has suction cups on it. You set it on your table, the restaurant, push down on the attachment points, and now that sucker is stuck on there. Then you can attach the tethers to any kind of toy, pacifier, whatever you have. Pop the tether into the mat. And this is prototype material, so I'm trying to be really careful and not break it. Um, and now when they drop and throw things, they stay right there. The other neat thing is um, if you've had kids, you've seen these little links that they make. Um, there are safety standards for kids. This tether can only be 12 inches long under five pounds of really long. Um, but you can also use these. They slip right into the hole. And now you can attach a sippy cup or whatever else. When you're done, you just wipe it down with a baby wipe. You unhook your whatever you've got tethered on there. Unsuction it. Just roll it all up together. And kind of like how you put a pillowcase on a pillow, you just reach in and you pull the sleeve right back over. It goes right back in your purse. So that's it. That's where I'm at. Um, questions, I guess. <laughs> We're going to have a couple of uh, some minutes here for questions. I'm going to pass this mic around. Are you okay with... Yeah. Talking loud. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Next <laughs> question? Oh, there. Yep. Beth, I'm curious. You said you were concerned about your IP being ripped off as soon as you go to market. Yeah. What do you feel differenti differenti <laughs> differentiates your product enough to protect that for as long as possible? What's the value you provide that no one else can? Right, so for, for, for our patent we did, I had a pretty extensive patent strategy. We had several meetings because there have been prior patents filed for similar ideas. Um, none of them were approved or written. Um, so we came up with a strategy behind the construction of the mat um, and the way that the suction cups are integrated into the, tether, or the uh, attachment points. Um, this design for manufacturing reasons, for utility, for the parents to have a pinch point to push down. There's a lot of utility behind the way this is designed. Um, so we feel we've got a pretty strong patent application, um, but it is pending. So we'll FDA see. Approval, did that take a lot of time? So FDA approval is really just the material. Um, I work with a manufacturer in China that does other infant products out of silicone. Um, they are, they're doing the testing there. Um, it's really just passing the tests. Um, with the material and the and the, the pull test for the tether length and everything. Okay, very impressive. Thank you. Thanks. Um, curious in terms of what kind of feedback have you gotten when it comes to the suction cups um, and the food getting underneath and cleaning that off? So I haven't, we didn't really experience that at all with testing. I tested with probably 15 different babies. Um, I took these families out to eat, sat down at the table with them. We put the mat on the table. The food generally just stays on top of the mat or the food does end up on the floor. That's the one thing you can't really prevent. Um, so we didn't really have a problem with food getting under the mat. Um, the mat is dishwasher safe. So you can do a quick wipe down with baby wipes and then when you get home, throw it in the dishwasher if it really got messed up. <laughs>